In the field of data modeling, we're creating a visual blueprint of our data. And what it's going to do is show data and their relationships between each other, and then guide the design and creation of our database we're putting together. It also helps make sure, because we have something visually, that we have an easy way to unify understanding of the data. So it's easy to share what our data looks like. And the way that you can think about this is like a home blueprint. We might put a blueprint together as we're building a home to make sure we have sound construction or we can make adjustments if it's needed. And so everyone knows what the home is going to look like. So they can all work together as we're building this home. That's the various contractors that are going to be involved. And the term for our blueprint we're going to use in the case of our data is the schema. And this is a simple example of a schema where you've got a few tables and it shows the relationship between those tables that are going to exist in the database. So our schema is our blueprint. And one of the reasons why, again, we do this is because a picture can be worth a thousand words. Rather than trying to write out or explain the relationship, it's great to have a picture, a schema. And so as an example, I could describe what an ice cream cone looks like to you using words like this. But if I was to give you a picture, it's much more easy to get a common understanding and a quick understanding of what the ice cream cone looks like. The schema for a database is the same example. It's a real quick way to share what the database looks like. And so as we start modeling out, building this design, we have three different types of data modeling. We're going to kind of proceed from left to right, from conceptual to logical to physical data modeling. And so conceptual data modeling, it starts with business concepts and goals. And we're not really thinking about the technology at this point. What are our business goals and how is the database going to support that? And then we start moving to logical, where we get more detail, more granular. And then into physical, where we actually have specific designs that are technology focused. We might be designing what database tool we're using, what the tables are, and what the data types are within those tables, and so on. There should be a lot of detail at that point, enough to guide the design and creation of our database. Now, as we model this out, as we proceed through these steps, what we're going to do is identify what are called the entities, the things we're going to be tracking data about. Maybe it's, for example, like our products or parts or customers. Those could be entities. And then what we'll do in the next step is identify key properties of those entities. Like for products, for example, maybe we have a, uh, a product description, a supplier ID who provided that product, and so on. And then we identify the relationships among these entities. Again, that could be like products, suppliers, customers, parts, and so on. How are they related? And then we decide on what's called the degree of normalization. And we'll talk about that later in another video. But, um, and then after that, we'll finalize and validate the data model and make sure it's uh, working as intended. So let's look at an example here. Let's imagine that we have a home garden. I know we're not talking about a database here, but let's use this to illustrate this idea of modeling. And what we want to do is design our home garden before we start planting to make sure we can hopefully achieve our goals with the garden. Okay, so I'm going to start more conceptually up at the top here and think about my goal. Maybe my goal is to feed my family a well-balanced diet with this garden. Again, I'm starting with business concepts first. And then I slowly start drilling down. So maybe what I determine based on that is I want to have a space in my garden for fruit, for vegetables, and for herbs. And then I drill down another step further as I detail out this design as, I design as I continue my modeling. Is it in fruit? I have apples and pears, or I want space for those. In vegetables, tomatoes and carrots, and herbs, basil and mint. So I'm actually plotting out what fruits, vegetables, and herbs are going to go in specific areas in the garden. And then to take it even one step further, I'm going to design you know, some kind of gate or fence around the garden to make sure I protect my, uh, my food here, make sure an animal doesn't eat it or something. And so I'm slowly starting from conceptual concepts and going into more detailed designs. And I want to make sure I design this before I start planting because a poor design might result in like malnutrition. I might not get enough food or the right food. Or I could have inefficient use of space, like um, I might not make best use of my garden. Or I could have an invasion by critters. So I want to make sure I spend time designing or modeling up the front so when I build out this design or build out the garden in this case, I've got to, you know, it's actually achieving my goals that I've set out for. 
Okay, now let's think about a business example here. Maybe we own a retail store, and what we want to do is design our data model, our schema, before we start building our database to make sure the database actually achieves its goals. And so let's imagine first, as we build out our model, that we know we have to track information or data about our suppliers, orders, customers, and products. These are our entities. And then what I want to do is understand the relationships between them. So maybe what I know is that suppliers provide products, and then customers make orders, and orders include products. So I start with my entities and start explaining the relationship between them. And then as I get further down, what I might do is take each of these entities, like products, for example, and determine what field should go in that table, what information or data I need to track about products specifically. And so maybe I'll have a product ID to uniquely identify it, a supplier ID to designate which supplier provided that, the name of my product, a description, whether or not it's been discontinued, and so on. Okay, so I'm getting one step further here. I'm adding more detail over time. And what I could do is I could use a tool like Lucidchart or Visio. There's um, several tools to do this. I could start building out my schema in those tools that have shapes and connectors specifically for what I'm doing here. Now, as I get closer to what's called physical data modeling, which is kind of the last type um, of data modeling, what I may do is choose the database. Maybe it's like Snowflake. And then I write SQL to set up the tables and so on. And I start thinking about backup and security. It's kind of like the security around my garden. I'm adding these physical design components to make sure I protect my data. Now, there's a couple of approaches we could do this as we move through modeling. We could use a top-down approach where we begin broad, like thinking about big business goals, kind of like in the example of my garden, thinking about feeding my family. It's this broad goal and then refine it to more detail. Okay, so this approach is more aligned with enterprise goals because we start really up there. But there may be cases where it makes more sense to use bottoms-up approaches. We're starting with specifics and then building out towards something more broad. So maybe we have to consider our existing data structures. Like we can't, that, there's already stuff out there. We're going to build around that. So work with the realities we have, like there's already tables and things out there. We just want to build beyond that or maybe improve what's already there and move to something more broad so we're still hopefully achieving uh, business goals up above that we're setting out. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, click the subscribe button. And if you're interested in a SQL cheat sheet, you can find one over at CodyBaldwin.com.